Oh, sorry. Yes, sir. Double A, I got a great idea. I want to address the men this morning, so dash me over a little speech. Something snappy. Something like, uh, or like President Lincoln used at Gettysburg, only streamline it. I'll do my best, sir. What's the subject? Oh, uh, relationship between officers and men. You know, get to know them personally. Democracy working, all that sort of thing. Right away, sir. How's this, sir? Officers and men and Carter. I'm going to try an experiment in this regiment. We are a great democratic people, and I want to prove to the world that democracy functions in the armed forces country as well. Very good, very good. Splendid, Sergeant, splendid. An army lacking an esprit de corps is in a state of marcescent decrepitude. What, what's that last? Marcescent decrepitude. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Marcess and decrepitude. Yes, of course, of course, of course. Carry on, carry on. The important part army morale has played in previous campaigns is well worthy of your attention. This all-important subject cannot be lightly dismissed. <clears throat> and I believe this will stimulate a spirit of camaraderie unknown to any other army in the world. Yes, sir. Oh, that's excellent, Sergeant. That is excellent. Now, if I can only memorize this before... Really, man, it was nothing. Any one of you could have done as well, if you'd have been as good a shot as I am. Uh, hey, oh, as good as us. <laughs> well, who wants the old autograph? What are those infernal braggarts sounding off about now? Oh, those are the men that won the pistol match again, sir. They won? I'd give my eye teeth to find someone to outshoot those two puffed-up windbags. Why don't you win it? I wasn't in the match, sir. No, oh, no, no, of course. My speech! Look! Look! Put it out! Do something! Do something! Oh, I told you, Ames and Cobb, they're jinxes. Look at my speech, all burned. What am I going to do? No speech. Well, don't stand there. What am I going to do? It's quite all right, sir. I'll prompt you. Prompt me with that? No, sir, but I remember the speech word for word. <sighs> Double day, that mind of yours will never cease to be a source of wonderment to me. If you could only shoot. Now, remember, while I'm speaking, stay right close to me. Yes, sir. Very close. Yes, sir. Oh, Dad, I, I just wanted to make sure you hadn't forgotten we're riding out to the lake today. I never forget anything, my dear. We'll go just as soon as I finish making my speech. I said very close. Yes, sir. All right, men. All in. What's the matter with you, Doubleday? Oh, sorry, sir. Something got in my eye, sir. Well, take it out. At ease! And now I have a few remarks to make that are of the utmost importance. Officers and men of Camp Carver. What is it? You're going to try an experiment. Oh, yes. I am going to try an experiment in this regiment. We are known as a democratic people. Hey, look at Teacher's like pet. If he gets any closer to the colonel, he'll be riding him piggyback. Yeah, the boy wonder. But in our armed forces as well. We feel that there should be brought about a closer relationship between officers and men. The important part that army morale has played in previous campaigns is well worthy your um, attention. Well worthy your what? Attention! Attention! Not so loud. Sorry, sir. <clears throat> this all-important subject cannot lightly be... Uh, be what? 
Understand this. You'll keep your eyes on what I'm about to do. understand English, I'll explain what these figures mean. What have I been doing? Talking to myself? Hey, you! Double day! Yes, I mean you, the boy wonder. Just because you came into this outfit with a lot of book learning about the Army, and had learned they made you a sergeant in the first 24 hours. That doesn't mean that you can't learn anything from an old campaigner like me who knows what he's talking about. Have you heard anything I said? Every word, Sergeant. And if I may say so, you've simply been confusing the men. Oh, I have. Have I? With the captain's permission, I'd like to show the men what Sergeant Ames is driving at. Very well, Dolay. First place, all this is unnecessary. Your drawing was misleading, Sergeant. Your diagram was suggestive of the trajectory of a bullet rather than the striking energy. Oh, a wise guy, huh? Well, before you go any further, Sergeant, suppose you demonstrate to the class the correct firing position used in pistol practice. According to Basic Field Manual, FM 3 35, the details of firing position are as follows A. Grasp the stock with the correct grip. B. Face the target, then face half left. C. Separate the feet from 12 to 18 inches. D. Free of mind, young Subdouble. Positively encyclopedic. Spin. He's remarkable, Hold sir. The breath. As soon as the arm becomes tired or the aim becomes unsteady, assume the position of raised pistol. Sit down. You don't know what you're talking about. You're all wrong. Just a minute, Ames. The man's absolutely correct. <laughs> yes, sir. <clears throat> You may carry on, Captain. Eddie. Gee, the pistol should be removed from the right hand and the muscles of the arm, hand, and shoulder relaxed. Colonel. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Hutton, factory technician of the Jameson Automatic Rifle Works. He's here to explain the mechanics and working parts of this new type of rifle. You men probably know the Army is considering this rifle but I doubt that any of you know the principle of its operation. Excuse me, sir, but I know all about it. I'm afraid you're mistaken, Sergeant. None of these rifles have it as yet. Well, if I can borrow it a moment, sir, I'm sure I can demonstrate my knowledge of it. Well, you may try. Thank you, sir. The difference between the Jameson rifle and the Browning, Johnson, and Garin, which are automatic types, is in its gas ejector. To remove the mainspring, the mainspring cap on the housing pin retainer from the mainspring housing, compress the mainspring, and push out the small mainspring cap pin. To remove the magazine from the receiver, the left end must be pressed inward. When the right end of the magazine catch will project so far from the right side of the receiver, it may be rotated one half turn. 
This movement will release the magazine catch lock from its seat in the receiver when the magazine catch, the magazine catch lock, and the magazine catch spring may be removed. Boy's a wizard. Amazing. In disassembling this piece, the soldier should lay out the parts in such orderly rotation that he will be able to reassemble the gun under the most adverse conditions, such as under fire or in total darkness. Well, you must have worked in our factory, Sergeant, before you joined the Army. No, sir, but I did read an article in a magazine with diagrams of this rifle, and I never forget a thing I read. Takes more than reading to make a good soldier. It seems to help, Ames. You ought to try it sometime. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, uh, Mr. Hutton, you can carry on from there with the uh, finer points. Well, there's nothing to say. He's covered everything. Well. Thank you, Sergeant. That'll be all for today, man. Dismissed! Sergeant Ames, bring this rifle over to my office. I want to examine it in detail. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Smart Alex Savvy. What are you trying to do? Make a fool out of me? But Sarge, shut up! I'll get those stripes off of you if it's the last thing I do. I was only trying. Go on, scram! Beat it! Oh. I wonder how that little squirt figured this thing out. Let me see. What did he do? Oh, yeah. He just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hello? Sergeant Ames! What's holding you up? Where's that rifle? Well, uh, I'll be right over there, sir. I'm, I'm just picking it up, sir. Yes, sir. Well, get it over here and get it over here quick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Oh. Listen, punk. I just spent 200 bucks having the best Swiss gunsmith in the country go over this gun, and nobody's gonna handle it but me. 200 bucks, 200. Why, well, say, that's only chicken feet compared to what I got sunk in this one. <laughs> the gun wizard. Look at him, look at him. He's scared to death. He can't even pull a trigger, much less hit anything. <laughs> A little gun shy, eh? Well, that's quite surprising. With your knowledge of guns, you should be a good marksman. Well, I've made a study of it, sir, but somehow the gun doesn't act the way it reads in the instruction book. Why don't you put the gun down and throw the book at the target? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be enough of that, Ames. Sorry, sir. As a cure for flinching, Sergeant, I suggest a few rounds of rapid fire. Now, stick it out there and start firing. Double day, you better go out in the woods and practice before you kill somebody. Here. Yes, sir. You men better count off. Hey, Double day. I guess you found out it takes more than book learning to know how to handle a pistol.
If you ever catch a fish I can fry, we won't have to eat this cold ham. I can't catch anything with that confounded fish hawk hanging around. He's got them all hiding under the bank. Who we'll fired that shot? Well, it came from over there, Daddy. Hey, you! You! Yes, sir. Come here. Yes, sir. Double A, did you shoot this hawk? I'm afraid so, sir. Sorry. Sorry? What for? It was a perfect shot. Right through the eye. Why don't you tell me you could shoot? What are you holding back for? Oh, but you see, sir... No, tut, 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 my boy. There's no place for false modesty in the army. Did... Oh, oh, it's my daughter Betty. This is Sergeant Doubleday. You should know more young men like him. How do you do, sir? Oh, I've heard a lot of nice things about you. So have I. I mean, that is, I'm sure. Have you? Well, uh, won't you sit down and join us? I'd like to, if it's all right. All right, of course it's all right. <laughs> Only this morning, I was speaking about... I made a speech on democracy. Hey, I... Uh, uh, oh, 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 but you know about that. Uh, yes, of course. Sit down, my boy. Sit down, sir. Well, that's a wonderful idea, Daddy, to bring the officers and men closer to each other. Of course it's a wonderful idea. I thought of it, didn't I? Well, I'm sure I'd like it. Uh, as a matter of fact, we might invite the sergeant over for dinner sometime. Why not? Make a note of that, Devil Day. Remind me to invite you... Oh, send him an invitation. <laughs> I will. Oh, Daddy! Daddy, you fell on the line. Get this thing off my foot. Why don't hook it for my spur? You know, there it goes again. No, don't shove, young man. Yes, I never saw so many people in my life. Look out of the way, Betty. Hey, Betty, where's the nest? Oh, it's around the tail of the horse. Of course. Here he comes, here he comes. Gee, he's a beaut, Dad. Shh. Shh. Goodbye, Daddy. Oh, oh, he's loose. Look, he's flopping back into the lake. My boy, you've saved the day. The greatest exhibition of shooting on record. Right through the eye. How did you do it? Gosh, it was wonderful. How did he do it? Why, he drew on the dead run, fired from the hip without even taking aim, and caught the fish right through the eye like he did the fish hawk. My boy, you're the best shot in the regiment. As a matter of fact, you're the best shot in the army. You stand for it, sir? Word with you two men about uh, the national pursuit coming up. Suppose you're both a little nervous about it. Well, after all, sir, we we are the best shots in the regiment. We're the best shots in the army. At least uh, I am. Well, uh, this is uh, sort of uh, off the record. Oh, stand at ease, men. Stand at ease. Uh, forgetting for the moment that I'm your commanding officer. Would you uh, like to bet, say, uh, a month's pay on that? Oh, that's for me. Me too. That's fine, then. We'll settle it this afternoon. Uh, pardon me, sir, but might I inquire just who is uh, your man? Yeah. A soldier? Naturally, he's a soldier. And a good one. Sergeant Doubleday. Do D 
Double, Double day. Double day. <laughs> <laughs> you men will find that I know a pistol shot when I see one. The Smith. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hey, do you suppose the, the colonel knows something? No. <laughs> well, uh, that double day, he, he does everything so good. Maybe he's playing possum on us with this shooting business. I wonder. You sent for me, sir? Yeah, Sergeant. <laughs> Why don't you do me a little favor? It'll be an easy assignment for you, my boy. Oh, I'll be glad to oblige, sir. Send to these men. But hey, I want you to give these two men a lessons in the fine art of pistol shooting. All right, sir. Who, oh, me? Yes. I made a little wager regarding the best shot in the right. You settle it for us now. But, sir, I... No, 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 my boy. You've been holding back long enough. See? What'd that tell you? Three shots apiece. Best two out of three wins. Go ahead, Sergeant Ames. Yes, sir. Mark around 19. Sergeant names that eliminates you. All right, Sergeant Doubleday. Make it as painless as possible. Are you sure you want me to go through with this, sir? Listen, Sergeant, I'm getting a little fed up with this modesty of yours. Now get in there and shoot. I'm sorry, sir. Just a minute, Sergeant. Uh, you wouldn't like to increase those bets, would you? I bet that's a come on. Well, uh, no, sir. I think we better let the bet stand. All right, Sergeant. Now show them by putting the next two right in the bullseye. Double day. What happened? You didn't even hit the target. Well, I've been trying to tell you, sir. But the hawk and the fish. I saw them with my own eyes. But I didn't mean to hit them. They were both accidents. Accidents? Double day, you've let me down. I've a great mind to demote you. You'll get my checks on payday. Well? So, Sergeant, you, uh, Found out there's a lot of difference between shooting off a gun and shooting off your mouth. <laughs> I got a gun here that can't miss. Now, you, you take this and show them that you can really shoot. Thanks. Detail halt. Left face. Sergeant, instruct these men in the use of the night arm. Yes, sir. Carry on. Double A, your gun. Somebody handle it that knows how. At ease, men. You've all had preliminary instruction. As you men know, I'm the best shot in the regiment. So I'll give you the benefit of my years of experience. Watch 18. Double A, keep your eye on this. It's just possible that you might learn how to shoot a pistol. Would you mind 
delivering this to Sergeant Doubleday of Headquarters Company? Not at all, ma'am. Thank you. Not at all. What's this? To the best shot in the army. Well, I guess that's me, all right. Let's see what this says now. Miss Betty Barkley requests the pleasure of being at dinner. Colonel Barkley's quarters, seven to nine. Oh, boy! She wants me to... Seven o'clock. Uh-oh. To the best shot in the army. <laughs> I'd like to catch the guy that's reading my mail. Miss Be Miss Betty Barkley. Gee, I'm gonna have dinner with Miss Barkley tonight. Sergeant Cobb. Uh, I, I got your letter all right. <laughs> oh, I, I brought this for you. Oh, thank you. Well, um, won't you sit down? Uh, marshmallows. Excuse me. Sergeant Ames. Hiya, beautiful. Roses is red, violets is blue. Well, here they are. Thank you. It was awfully nice of you to pick me out of the whole regiment to have over to dinner. Oh, yes. Well, please sit down. Thanks. Roses is red, violets is blue. You big sissy. What's he doing here? I got a written invite. So did I. So, you're the bottleneck that's been reading my mail. Your mail? Yes, Why, my you mail. Listen, listen to me. Yes, I mail it. Please, I, I'm sure you're both welcome. Won't you sit down? Bullseye. Hundred yards. Isn't one of those guns liable to go off? Oh, no, no. They're not loaded. Well, before I lose my life, let's just put them in a nice, safe place until dinner's over. Oh, oh now, must please. We'll be careful with them. Good evening, Miss Barkley. Why, Sergeant Doubleday. Oh, won't you come in? Take your hat. I was afraid you weren't coming. Well, your invitation said 7 o'clock. I'm a little late. I thought you didn't get it. Oh, I couldn't miss it. Someone left it right on the table. That invite must have been meant for him. But we're here now, and we're going to stay here. Oh, how lovely. Oh, my favorite chocolate. Oh. My favorite flowers. How did you know? Oh, I guess I just sort of guessed it. Come in. Oh, Sergeant Ames and Sergeant Cobb, you must know Sergeant Doubleday. After all, he's the best shot in the regiment. Oh, yeah? 
He's what? Oh, of course, I understand. You boys are pretty good, too. Two? Thanks. Well, maybe somebody would like a piece of candy. Would you do the honors? I'll arrange these. Of course, I'd be delighted. Won't you uh, sit here, Sergeant? Oh, if you don't mind, I think I'll sit over here. Sit here. Divine. I brought these chocolates for Miss Barkley. Mm. You boys certainly are enjoying that candy. Mm, it, it's very good. You know, Miss Barkley, every time I eat candy, I always get a little thirsty. May I have a glass of water, please? Certainly. Hey, what are you doing? You can't do this to me! I hope this is cold enough. Thank you. Where's Sergeant Doubleday? Oh, he had to leave very suddenly. That's odd. Excuse me. Why, Sergeant, back already? Yes, I, I just went outside to see if my dog was all right. You know, Sergeant, you're right about that candy making you thirsty. I, I, I wonder if I could have a glass of water, too, please. Why, of course. I'll get it for him. Nonsense. I'm the hostess. You boys just sit down and make yourselves comfortable. But you don't understand. Not again. Have a heart. I'm a guest here. You'll be sorry. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Now what's happened to him? Yeah. Oh, he, he's just a fly by night. Yeah, sort of an inner and outer. <laughs> oh, uh, <coughs> we'll answer that. <coughs> While you get me another glass of water. It's, uh, it's that candy again. <coughs> But, sir, we thought you were uh, a prowler. Prowler? I'll have you broken for this. I'll have you put in a guardhouse. What are you doing here, anyway? Daddy, Daddy, there are guests. Guests? They nearly killed me. There, there are a couple of guests. Well, you remember your speech, your, your new idea of officers and men getting closer together? Oh, uh, uh, what? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Huh. Mm. Sit down! I'll get cleaned up a bit. Now, Chief, you sit there. And don't move unless I whistle. Psst. We may hang for this, but it'll be worth it. Wow! Uh, 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 uh. Before you boys do anything rash, Please. You boys are in the National Pistol Shoot tomorrow, aren't you? Yeah. Well, that well is 50 feet deep. All I have to do is whistle. Well, you boys know what happens when I whistle. Jeep always comes to me. And if he does, kerplunk. Shall I demonstrate? 
Oh, no, 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 pal, no, no. May I come in now, gentlemen? Oh, certainly. Well, of course, Sergeant. Will you gentlemen assist me? Yeah. Of course, gladly. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> What's all the shouting about? Why, uh, we were just saying hello to our old pal, Sergeant Doubleday, sir. Doubleday! How dare you show your face here after what happened today? But, Colonel Barkley, your daughter's... Keep my daughter out of it! But, sir, she... Don't argue with me! It's her names! Put him out! A pleasure, sir. Uh, just a minute, Sergeant. I don't think you want to put me out, do you? Did you hear what I said? Put him out! Sorry, sir. But I just can't seem to do it. Can't seem to do it? What kind of idiotic talk is that? Sergeant Cobb! Yes, sir. You put him out! Yes, sir. <laughs> I can't do it, neither. What? Two big bruises like you can't put out this little pipsqueak? Oh, it, it, it's not that, sir, but you see, well... He's got some sort of a mysterious power over us. Mysterious power? What kind of nonsense is that? Mysterious power. Double A, come here. Look, Double A. I know you've got a remarkable mind. I know you remember everything you read. You seem to know everything about the army. You seem to know everything about everything. But when you tell me of some mysterious power you have, that's carrying things a little too far. Are you three trying to put over something on me? Uh, no, sir. You see, I, I'm merely applying the principles of um, uh, Dr. Thorndike's book, How to Subject Others to Your Will. You mean to tell me that just because you read a book, you can make these two do anything you want? Oh, yes, sir. It's, it's surprising what you can do with your will when you know how. Oh, is it? Suppose you give me a demonstration. I should like to see you make them do something. Certainly, sir. <laughs> how are you men on Mother Goose? Mother, Mother Goose? Goose? Yes, let's have um, patty cake, patty cake, baker's man with gestures, you know. Now, just a minute, Doubleday. Oh, oh well. <laughs> If you insist. <clears throat> ah, 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 ah. With words. With words. Words. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Roll it, pat it, mark it with a T, and put it in the oven for baby and me. Aren't you boys a little old for patty caking? Uh, suppose you try it on me. You, sir? Yes, go ahead, try it on me. You see, it's an um, easy matter for me to control such Simply minds of Sergeant Ames and Hobb, but I'm sure I couldn't impose my will on your own, sir. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, it's hungry. Well, if they ain't, I'll eat their share too. Oh, uh, double, 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 day, double. Day. Mm -hmm. I've underestimated you, my boy. My, what a beautiful bird. <laughs> Too bad you men had your dinner before you came. What? Oh, oh yes. You see, <laughs> we didn't expect to be invited to dinner, too. Oh, but surely you can eat just a little bit. Oh, I'm afraid they couldn't eat a thing after the big meal they had, could you, boy? Oh, now look here, I... No, I... I couldn't eat nothing. Not a bite. I'm sure you must have room for an olive. Well... Wonderful dinner. Wonderful. Too bad you boys weren't hungry. 
<clears throat> well, what do you say if we top off dinner with a little close harmony? We've got a quartet. Betty, play my favorite, the old open bucket. Sure, Daddy. Now, let's see, uh, Sergeant Doubleday, you, uh, you take the lead. Sergeant Cobb, uh, you sing baritone, I'll sing bass, and Sergeant names you sing top tenor. I'm sorry, sir. I can't sing top tenor. Oh, yes, you can. He'll sing top tenor tonight, sir. Way up high. Very good, sir. I'll sing top tenor. Way up high. Good, 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 Sergeant. That willpower book's terrific. All set? <clears throat> What's the matter with Sergeant Ames, Sergeant Cobb? They must have been late for guard duty, sir. What? Oh, oh, yes, yes. They might at least have said good night before dashing out like that. Now, Betty, my dear, you don't understand. With a soldier, it's duty first always. Isn't that so, Sergeant Doubleday? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, of course. Well, all good things must come to an end, I always say. That bugle blows awfully early in the morning. Uh, Colonel Bartley, it uh, just occurred to me uh, wouldn't it be a grand idea to follow up your speech on democracy uh, for you to be the first officer to spend a night in the enlisted men's quarters? You probably haven't slept in a barracks in years. How about tonight? Why, that's a marvelous idea, Daddy. You know, Doubleday, I must have put that thought in your mind. I was just about to remark it. I don't know where I get these wonderful ideas. <clears throat> Oh! But, Sergeant, if I take your bed, where will you sleep? It's all arranged, sir. Corporal Gilpin's on leave, and I'll sleep in his bed. Oh, I see. Yes. Good night, sir. Good night, Sergeant.